here we are in Inkscape and I have a EPS file I want to import. And if we try to pull this in, you'll see I get an error saying that I cannot import the EPS file. So Inkscape natively out of the box cannot import EPS files, but there is a way around that by using a program called Ghost Script. So just come here to ghostscript.com. Now first we will want to go ahead, let's go ahead and close Inkscape if you have it open, all right? Make sure it's closed. Come here to ghostscript.com, come over here to the downloads. Now the download you'll be interested in for the EPS is this top one here, the PostScript and PDF interpreter renderer. I suggest you grab this top one here. You could technically grab the source, but if you don't know how to build things, that would just be too complicated. So we'll come to this first link here, scroll down a little bit, and what you'll want is either this one for Windows 32-bit, if you have a 32-bit system. Uh, most of us on Windows these days, if you, if you have a modern system, you'll be having a 64-bit system. So this is a download you will want to grab. This one right here, just click it and download it. Now I've actually already downloaded this. So I'll just close out of this. So let's head over here to our downloads folder, which is where we downloaded it to. And right here we have ghost script and I've already actually installed this, but of course you just install it like any other program, double click on it, go through all of this. I'm going to hit cancel because I already have it installed, but just go through that entire installation. Okay, so we're not quite done yet to be able to import EPS files into Inkscape. Now we have to do a little bit of messing around in the system. So what we have to do is modify our path environment variables. It sounds scary, but it's actually pretty easy. So the first thing you want to do is go to control panel. Now we can just come to control panel. I have control panel pinned right here. Come over here to control panel and go to system. Or if you want, you can just open up start and type in system and then open up system. Either way, you'll go to the exact same place. From there, click on advanced system settings. That pops up this window here. Let me minimize this one. So over here in the system properties, in the advanced tab, again, make sure you are on the advanced tab. Come here to environment variables. Okay, now we need to add a variable, a system variable, so Inkscape can know where to look for our ghost script so we can import our EPS file. So what you wanna do is come down here to where it says path, okay? In system variables right here, not up here, but down here in system variables, scroll down however far you need to, go to path. Now we'll go ahead and navigate to our ghost script folder, what was installed, and just make sure you're using the default settings for that, okay? So we'll come here to C, it's going to be, because I'm on 64-bit, it's gonna be program files, and you'll see this GS folder, so this double click that, then GS 9.19, your version may be different, but this should be the same, click on that, okay. Again, make sure Inkscape is completely closed, and you'll probably need administrator privileges to do this here, okay? So we have path chosen right here. Come over here and click edit. And what we want to do is add a new environment variable for the bin and the library of our ghost script, okay? It's actually pretty easy to do this. All right, so again, we're, we're here on Windows 10. It might be a little bit different depending on what system you're on. So what we wanna do is go to new, and right here you can see we can type in the path, but an easier way, let's pull this over here. I'll just double click on this bin, and you can see we get the full readout of this path right up here. So we can right click, up here in our search box or in the readout here and go to copy address as text. Awesome. So we'll just move this over again and we'll come down here and make sure we click new and I'll just hit control V or you can right click and paste either one. And there we go. Now we have added a new variable. Click okay. Awesome. Now we can go back to edit. Again, make sure you have path chosen. We'll go to edit and we'll do the same thing now for the library. So just double click on the library to enter that folder. So we have that full path here. And then we can copy this, right click and do copy, or you can right click and do copy address as text. We can minimize that. Go ahead and go to new. And I'll just do control V. There we go. And hit okay. And there we go. Now I come in here again and go to edit. And you can move these around. You move it up, move it down. I've heard some people say that uh, ghost script doesn't work well if it's at the bottom. So if it's not working well for you, you can just come in here and so and go to move up and start moving this up. All right, however far you think you need to. You don't have to do this. Uh, it should work, but if it doesn't, that is how you can do it. Okay, so now guess what? Now we're done. That wasn't hard at all. Go ahead and click okay and okay here. And now we're ready to go ahead and run Inkscape and see if it works. So we'll go ahead and Open up Inkscape again. All right, Inkscape is now open. Let's go ahead and see if we can 
import and EPS. Come up here to file, go to import, and I'll navigate to my downloads folder. I have a skull set here of EPS files. You can see I can select it and click open. Just give it a second. And then we get our PDF import settings. Now, I'm not going to go through this. Uh, you can play around with it. But, you know, for me, I'd want this to be higher. This slider here, the precision of approximate gradient meshes. Pull this up. It's going to make a larger file, obviously. So you can play around with this. You have some options for text handling. Uh, well, I don't have any options. You might uh, replace PDF fonts, embed images, things like that. You can go through that yourself, okay? Uh, more information on that on the Inkscape website. But I'm going to pull this up to about medium. We'll hit OK. And then give it a second to do its thing. And there we go. There is our EPS file. Let's hold Control and zoom in on the mouse here with the mouse wheel. You can see my computer is kind of slow here because I'm trying to record the screen. And, uh, you know, we have all these images open here. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. All right. So again, my computer is kind of slow here because we're recording the screen. We're our uh, recording audio, but that is how you can import your EPS files into Inkscape and go ahead and edit your artwork, go ahead and make your graphics, whatever you need to do, just by using Ghost Script. So the link for Ghost Script will be in the description below. So go check it out and start using your EPS files in Inkscape. You see, we can ungroup these. I don't really want to get into all this, but ungroup them. So after ungrouping everything, you can see that now. We have our separate skulls there. So maybe I just want that one. I'll just select that one. I'll just move it out of the way a bit here. All right. Then we'll just select everything else. And we can delete that just by hitting the delete key. All right. So now we just have our one skull. I'll just group this one here together. All right. Zoom in a little bit. Go ahead and make your design. You control Z out of this and get our other vectors back. So now we have all of our vectors here. We could go ahead and save this out as a new file if we wanted to. So we go save as, and we can name this uh, our skulls and save it as an Inkscape SVG if we wanted to. All right, pretty cool. But that is how you import EPS files into Inkscape using Ghost Script.